Stay tuned to find out not only which boutique brand I'm highlighting in this episode, but also who I am currently smoking with in this edition of the Dad Smoking Cigars podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Dad's Smoking Cigars podcast, sponsored by Casa Cueva Cigars, from our casa to yours, and StogieLives.com cigar social media. Thank you guys for tuning in, whether you are watching on YouTube or listening in on Spotify or wherever else this podcast is available. Hello, my name is Kyle D. Garrett. I am your host, as always, and... uh, I said I was going to be highlighting a a boutique brand, which is fairly new to me. I've been aware of this brand for some time now, but I have not really truly had the pleasure of being able to try their, uh, their offerings. But while at TPE, I not only had the pleasure of meeting one of the co-founders who I had, who I got to have a really great conversation with, but he uh, sent me home with a couple cigars and then I was very happy and pleased and privileged to find a package on my doorstep uh, just a couple weeks later with the full line of the cigars in a couple of sample bags and so I was very uh, very excited to dive into those but uh, then I got COVID (laughs) as you guys may have uh, remember me mentioning in the last episode um, but, uh, so I wanted to wait before I could truly enjoy them and everything that they had to offer, every nuance, every flavor note, every complexity in the profile. I did not want to miss anything. So I had to wait, which was, it felt like an eternity, but here I am. And, uh, I am talking about, I haven't even said the name yet. I am talking about Casa 1910. Now, um, there's a lot of significance behind the name of this cigar, the the brand name, which I won't have to get into because the person who I'm currently smoking with, not currently in the literal sense, but in that uh, I got to have a very nice sit-down conversation with this gentleman, a gentleman by the name of Manolo Santiago. Um, It was a great conversation. I was able to join him while he was in Mexico City and we had a great conversation. I already had the pleasure of enjoying uh, one of Casa 1910 cigars earlier, obviously during the interview. And that cigar was called the Cuchillo Parado, which I found out was absolutely appropriate because that was the very first cigar they released for that brand at PCA in 2021. So, I mean, talk about luck of the draw. That was awesome. And it worked out pretty nicely. It was one of the most comfortable exciting and really just deep interviews that i've i've had the pleasure of being a part of and so i'm going to stop talking and i am just going to let the interview speak for itself so i hope you guys will uh, enjoy this interview with co-founder of casa 1910 manolo santiago what's up everybody you are watching dad smoking cigars and today i am currently smoking with Manolo Santiago, co-founder of Casa 1910 Cigars, and he is coming to me direct live directly from Mexico City. How are you today, my friend? Hello, Kyle. Well, I'm in in Mexico City right now. Very very hot weather here, <laughs> but I am joining the conversation with you guys. Thank you. I'm I'm so glad that you could uh, be here with me. We. We uh, fortunately got to meet for the first time in Vegas at TPE. It was a pleasure getting to spend some time with you and talk a little bit about uh, your cigars and everything. And uh, I think it only appropriate to start off this talk with you telling everyone a little bit about Casa 1910 and how it started and the history behind it. Well, um, 1910, oh, Casa 1910, it's... Um... At the moment when when we take the option to make a, a new 
Mexican cigar and lifestyle brand, it's very mm -hmm. important to say uh, Casa 1910 it just, it, it's not just for cigars. It's a lifestyle and cigar uh, brand. Mm -hmm. um, because the, the principal idea for Jamie, uh, Jamie Barr, Serge Wallach, and I, uh, co founder for Casa 1910, we, we need to, or the principal issue for make a, a new brand from Mexico, it's why other countries mm -hmm. like uh, Dominican Republic, like uh, Honduras or like uh, Nicaragua, yeah. make a very great cigars, make a very special cigars with Mexican tobacco. But we just for the binder, just for the grapper, and some brands never talks about the Mexican tobacco. Uh, right. And and it's very important for us make a conscience for the all cigar aficionados and, and all cigar smokers. Mexico make a good tobacco, not just for the binders, not just for the wrappers, about the fillers. Uh, we produce in Mexico very great fillers for, for premium cigars. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's because we need to expose Mexico in all of Casa 1910, uh, in the box, in the selection of the colors, in the in the logotype, in the cigars, of, co of course, and in, in our accessories, uh, kind of, the, or ashtrays or, or jackets. It's very important for us to expose Mexico the quality, the high level products for for Mexico, and it's because we make this brand for entire entire situation about the luxury Mexican lifestyle brand. And Casa Casa is house in in Spanish, mm -hmm. and we take the the name of Casa. <clears throat> Sorry, but I need to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. It's delicious. Mm. So, um, the name of Casa, it's it's a, the name of the classic or the old business in the old days in Mexico. Right. Actually, right. right now, you, you can find uh, some, some business. Uh, it's called Casa plus the last name of the owner. Mm -hmm. For example, um, maybe a hat tailor. Uh, it's named, my last name is Santiago. And Casa Santiago, Taylor, Hat Taylor, no? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's because we take the, the name of Casa House plus 1910. And 1910 is the year of the Mexican Revolution began, okay? Uh, the right. 20th of November for, 20, the, for 1910. And it's very important for us, the, the, the Mexican Revolution, because the Mexican Revolution uh, founded and made the base for the new Mexico, the new politi politician way, the new democratic way, the new farms and agriculture uh, way to, to grow in Mexico and the gender and the levels of the short social, uh, social levels in, mm -hmm. in Mexico City, the, the independence, it's, it's very important for us. But the Mexican Revolution, it's it, it takes a lot of 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 the importance for for the Mexico, the New Mexico, right? Actually, and it's because we make Casa 1910, um, this Mexican lifestyle and cigar brand, yeah. Which I I think is fantastic because. Um... You know, one of my favorite, you know, like you said, it's it's you normally hear about Mexican tobacco when it's a part of the blend. It's not part of the complete, you know, it's not the whole makeup of the cigar. And even if it is, you know, people are only marginally aware of Mexican tobacco because Mexican San Andres wrappers are just Mexican San Andres is one of my favorites. I love it. I love the flavor that it adds to certain cigars. And it's just it just really enhances that flavor and experience for me. And so I really do love and appreciate that 
And I'm actually pretty excited over the fact that, you know, Mexico is getting representation in the cigar industry more fully than just say, oh, well, we got a Mexican San Andres binder or filler or wrapper here and that we decided to throw in for a little bit more spice or whatever, you know, um, it's it's showing that, you know, Mexico has a quality product to give. I mean, and I'm going to be 100 percent honest with you. This is my very first casa 1910 cigar that i'm smoking at least in recent memory i it's possible i may be that may be inaccurate i think i may have been given one a long time ago and i smoked our friend paula uh chicks and sticks um who you were on her show a while back and she yeah. interviewed you um she it's possible she gave me one and i smoked it at her lounge at the time but that was last year and i'd i'd gone through so many cigars Unfortunately, I probably did not take enough time to truly appreciate it. But now that I am, it is fantastic. As I, I mentioned to you before, I'm smoking the Cuchillo Parado, which maybe you could tell me a little bit about this this cigar in particular, because it's the flavor is fantastic. Great. I, I'm really glad to, to hear you about the Cuchillo Parado, um, because Cuchillo Parado, uh, the correct translation for, for the English is left of left of knives but it's no it's not so important because the name of cuchillo parado it's the name for the town for the for the first battle for the mexican revolution because mm -hmm. okay a cuchillo parado it's part of the <clears throat> the line revolutionary edition for our cigars mm -hmm. uh, the revolutionary edition it's cigars made in mexico 100% uh, handmade and made entirely with Mexican tobaccos. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Revolutionary Edition is made with Tierra Blanca, the Toro, uh, Al Negro San Andres, and the Cuchillo Parado. Cuchillo Parado is our flagship cigar. It's a robusto shaped cigar, 5x50, medium mm -hmm. strain cigar. The first part is medium to mild, and the last part is medium. And it's our flagship cigar. And actually, when when we release and we show the brand for the first time in Las Vegas, Nevada, in PCA in 2021, we released the brand with just one cigar, mm -hmm. the Cuchillo Parado. Um, well, then I picked the, the right one today, didn't I? I picked the right one. <laughs> mm, great. <laughs> it's It's... It's a, the part of the collection. Yes, right absolutely. <laughs> and and it's it's very funny because um, when when we make the um, the all uh, preparation for the PCA, we talked uh, between us and we talked. Really, we release the brand with one cigar, and I say. Yes, because this is a great cigar. This cigar, it's very great to smoke right now. Mm -hmm. And the second one, the Tierra Blanca, it's not totally completed the, the resting process because uh, in Mexico, in the Revolutionary Edition, we're resting the cigars for six to eight months before we roll it. And the Tierra Blanca, it's not completed the the resting process for me and uh, is because I, I I don't like to show one cigar if you can try and if you can smoke this this cigar and it's because we we re release the brand with just one cigar the cuchillo parado and the cuchillo parado it's my first blend made by by me and um, this is a blend with in the filler I use different Negro San Andres. Why different? Because I use for different floor plants, leaves for Negro San Andres. All tobacco leaves, it's uh, with five years age before we roll it, okay? And, and the binder, it's Negro San Andres for just for the part of the, of the volado, the most close part for, for the floor, okay? And uh, the wrapper, the, the wrapper, it's a Mexican Sumatra wrapper. It's an original Sumatra seed. 
but growing in Mexico, in the San Andres Valley from, from Veracruz. And we take this kind of, of wrapper and we age it, this, this wrapper for three years before we roll. And the, this kind of wrapper takes one fermentation and one other fermentation, but too long fermentation for three years. Mm -hmm. the, the first fermentation, it's very, it's very a short fermentation. It's at about by 35 days. And the last fermentation, it's a long fermentation for three years. Okay. Uh, to make a good color, to make a good combustion, to make a good uh, flavor and aroma. And I make this cigar for perfect pairing with uh, tequilas because mm. I'm from I'm from Jalisco, Guadalajara, the land of tequila and mariachi, of course. Of course. And and we we need to uh, for for our cigars for 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 us every cigar it's one experience. And the cuchillo parado, the the complete experience is. The cuchillo parado plus the tequila reposado and tequila añejo. You need to make an evolution with the with the spirit. You need to make evolution with the cigar. And it, between between the cigar and the tequila, it's like a, a beautiful bridge uh, with the sweetness of the tequila and the woods and the herbs with the with uh, about the cigar. It's a perfect bridge between between our elements and. Um, for the tequila and, and the cigar. And it's very important to say that this cigar is its our relative presentation for, for all society, for smokers. Mm -hmm. And and I'm very happy to with with Cuchillo Parado. It's very I I, I love this cigar. I love the, the <laughs> and and you should. It's something to be proud of. Just um, already, just in my experience, and I've only smoked a third of it. Just a, I'm loving. It's a very smooth and sweet flavor. You know, lots of earth, a little bit of woodiness. So I can definitely see how that would pair nicely with a tequila. Tequila. Now, I'm not a very frequent tequila drinker. I'm mostly whiskey. Um, and I think you and I had a discussion about that. While we were at TPE about like, and because I asked you, I said, how about bourbon? What would pair well with bourbon? And you gave me the rundown on a couple of them, but uh, I'm definitely going to have to, and I'll have, probably have to go over to my dad's house because my dad owns at least two or three bottles of tequila that we could probably experiment with, with these cigars. And I'm, I'm excited to share these with him because he's a very seasoned cigar smoker. He's the reason why he's the reason why I call my channel and brand dad smoking cigars because he got me into them. I'm a father as well. So there you go. And ah, um, yeah, so um, but it's it's a delicious cigar. I'm I'm it, as I said before, it's something you should be proud of and excited about. And, you know, when you're talking about the rollout of just one cigar i i mean there's so many cigar manufacturers who have done exactly the same thing they started with just one just one because the blend was perfect it had rested long enough and yeah there were other blends that were still resting and you could you could just as easily rush them out and say you know what let's just move them all out because we want to get our product out there but then again you're not doing the consumer any favors by rushing a cigar that needs to rest for like, you know, I don't know, three or four more months. And so, you know, I, I think it's, some would say it's a, it's a bold move, but I think it's honestly the thing to do. If you have one good cigar in your, um, in your lineup, that's ready to go roll with that. And then that way pe they'll get people excited for the rest of them as they come. Yes. So, and, and actually we have just one shot in the or or first trade show, the the PCA, mm -hmm. we talk about the okay guys, we have one chance <laughs> to make a, a good impression. Exactly. It's because in, in, in every trade show we have cigars, we have tequila, and we have mariachis. <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 will bring an audience for sure. I, I really love that about uh what you guys were doing at TPE. I thought that was fantastic. Just because, I mean, it's it's 
it's a, it shows a very fierce pride in your culture and your history. And I think that's wonderful because I mean, it, in a country as uh, blended as the United States, you know, you don't see as much of that unless you go to certain parts of the country, you know, certain parts of the country where, you know, certain uh, groups and backgrounds are, have like really high concentration in certain neighborhoods and cities, you know, you don't see as much of that. And I think it's, I think it's wonderful. And I love the fact that you're sharing it with us and all of us who appreciate and enjoy cigars. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fantastic thing. And I, I, I'm getting excited about it because, you know, it's, I think you are the, yeah, you are definitely the first brand that is exclusively Mexican tobacco and it is a rarity. And I think it's wonderful that you're bringing that to uh, bringing that to the market and the industry so people can appreciate it more. No, thank you. But actually we have a lot of inspiration for for make uh, Mexican cigars. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I talk about the Casa Turren, the, the Turren family, the, the Te Amo cigars, the Santa Clara, and other many, many factories and, and many blenders and many farmers from, from Mexico. It's our inspiration to, to make a good cigars, to, to make a good Mexican cigars, because we, we need, because we need to, to increase the um, the Mexican tobacco scene in, yeah. in the tobacco shop in, in, around the world, and because part of of my goals for the future, I need to see more Mexican brands in the tobacco shops in the United States, in the Europe, and other countries for Latin America not just in, in local area in Veracruz, not just in, in locals. Uh, I, I need to I, I need to see the the increase of quality, the increase of of branding uh, of the Mexican brands. And if if we can to make a good bridge between a uh, other um other markets to to the Mexican brands. Mm -hmm. We make good, good job, and be, because it's it's part of of our goals of of Casa nineteen ten. That's that's fantastic, and I'm I'm really really uh pulling for you guys to do that, just because it's not something you really see in the U.S. I mean, it's I I've only traveled to Mexico a couple of times in my life. I was recently there last year. You know, I was in um Cabo San Lucas you know Big Sur and all that uh, loved it it was beautiful I had a great time um really hard to find a good quality cigar shop I will say that um just because unfortunately they they tend to uh cater to the Cuban palate um just because you can get well they say you can get Cuban cigars in Mexico but some of them are very questionable um <laughs> even even if you're not getting them from the street vendors which I tell people never do that um, even if you're getting them from the shops, it's hard to tell if they are real and they don't tend to cater too much other than that in the cigar shops. Um, I don't now, granted, I was not looking for, and I was not as familiar with Mexican brands. So I wasn't, I didn't know what to look for, but I, you see the usual in the cigar shops, you see all the Monte Cristos, the Cohibas and all of the, you know, Romeo Julieta, all of that just because that's what sells. Um, so, I mean, I think it's fantastic that you're bringing one an awareness of quality Mexican brand uh, tobacco in the United States, but also like people who travel to Mexico, now they're going to be on the lookout for Mexican cigars. They're going to be Googling, where can I find good quality Mexican brand cigars? You know, now that, you know, they are aware of the fact that like they are, there are brands and, you, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit about some of the other ones that are available because I mean, just, I, I had no idea and they don't either and they need to know about it. So I think it's, I think it's fantastic just because not only here in the States, but travelers to Mexico, now they know they can, they can ask around and look for Mexican, um, Mexican cigars. 
yeah, uh, it's it's very complicated uh, about your your travel in in, in Los Cabos because it's reality. If if you go to a, a good hotel, maybe you can go to the tourist store. And you can see a little humidor with a lot of, of Cuban cigars. And maybe you can find some tobacco shops in the street. But maybe it's a, a fake Cuban cigars. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, we, we call it this, this kind of cigar, the Vera Cruanos. Uh, a, half, a, half, a half part, it's a Vera Cruz, and a half part, it's a Cuban cigars. You know, <laughs> it's a Vera Cruanos. It's a really, 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 really fake cigars with with uh, with uh, guayaba, guayaba leaves, uh, guava leaves, <laughs> not tobacco leaves. It's a guava, guava leaf, and it's or or banana leaves. It's very complicated to. Oh to, no! Yeah, yeah. It's it's really awful. it's it's awful. Yeah. It's awful. wow. Maybe you can see a a, a very dark uh, wrapper, and it's it's very curious because you can you can find a uh, very rare coibas. The wrapper of a regular coiba it's very clear. It's very creamy and mm -hmm. clear wrapper. But you can see uh, about the fakes a dark wrapper. May, may, mm -hmm. Maybe a negro San Andres wrapper with a little rings with the coiba on the little box with the with the glass glass yeah it's that's it's telltale awful. sign it's awful. and and you can see the 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 logo type of coiba but like a pirate with a <laughs> with the <laughs> part you know it's, it's very awful I was um, I was at a gift shop and it, and it, like he snuck up on me. That was the crazy thing because I was I was at a an open air kind of well it was the front part was open of the gift shop and we were just looking for souvenirs to take to our kids back home and um, I was looking through one of the areas and there was a guy who just came right up on the street and he was he's practically whispered in my ears he's like hola amigo qué was it home I'm like I looked at it and it's the clear glass box. With the, with it said Monte Cristo, but I'm like, nope, not nope. And I said, no, gracias. And he walked away. <laughs> no, well, if you come to Mexico, or to Mexico again, please, you can find the La Casa de la Habana, the LCDH stores, is the official yeah. stores, and maybe inside some some hotels in in the principal areas, the the principal tourist areas, inside of the hotel in the in the gift shops. You need to to check the logotype of of a band mm -hmm. and another kind of of stuff, or maybe you can you can buy in the duty free. Uh, it's better, but but if you come to Mexico, you need to try a good Mexican cigars. Yeah, and you can write me and and I give you some some recommendations to to find good Mexican cigars, of course. Now I'm sure like it's relative to different cities. Like each city kind of has something different to offer, and you know, in their in local shops, um, you know, are there certain brands that are like more popular in different cities, or is it just like you know, you just have to know what to look for? No, well, uh, in Mexico, we have two principal areas to to the tobacco industry. Uh, in near to Jalisco, actually the north part of Jalisco, it's Nayarit, is the biggest uh, producers for tobacco, but um, the the blonde tobacco from cigarettes, okay. Mm -hmm. And in Veracruz area, in the Tuxtlas area, is the most bigger producer for negro tobacco negro, the the black tobacco for. For premium cigar, uh, premium cigars, and um, all the cigars when you find in in Mexico, uh, for Mexican cigar, it's from Veracruz. And uh, are those the areas that you're more likely to find more of those brands, the Mexican brands, if you go to shops closer to those areas? If 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 you if you visit, uh, San Andres. Veracruz, the uh, Tuxlas area for the state of, of Veracruz, the principal producers of, of Negro tobacco, the mm -hmm. black tobacco from, from premium cigars. 
maybe you can see a lot of people smoke cigars. It, it's very curious. And actually, right now, maybe you can find a couple of, of tobacco shops, uh, maybe more, maybe more factory shops. Um, but right now, the 80% or maybe more, the 80% for entire business of, of Mexican tobacco is the raw material, selling the raw material, the rama. Oh, for okay. Nicaragua, Honduras, or Dominican Republic. Um, in, in Veracruz, we have a lot of, of tobacco producers, but no cigar producers. Uh, it's, it's, it's very awful for us because we need to, to increase uh, this. We need to change the game. We, right. we need to make a good cigars and we need to make a more importation for different tobaccos from Nicaragua, from Honduras, from DR to make mm -hmm. a good blend in Mexico. We need to make a good factories in, in, in Mexico. Right now, I, I know a, a several cigar producers in other countries uh, make a good deals in, in, in Mexico for growing tobacco. But maybe, I, I don't know, in, in the mean future, uh, Maybe we can have uh, some important cigar producers with uh, one factory in Mexico. I, I, I don't know. Uh, if, if Tesla is coming to Mexico, maybe what, why the other cigar producers not? You yeah, know? you know what? It's, it's stranger, stranger things have happened, I'm sure. Um, so, um, well, I want to kind of, uh, Speaking of good cigars representing Mexico and everything, you have a new line that's just come out. And I, when I heard about it, I thought it was incredible. And I'm looking forward to trying the new line and the samples you sent. Uh, so why don't you talk about what you were calling the Soladera line and, and the significance of that? Sure. Uh, well, right now we have three different lines with mm -hmm. eight different cigars. The principal line or our flagship uh, line, it's a revolutionary edition. Uh, it's all about the history for the towns and the principal battles for the Mexican Revolution. Okay, right. the Cuchillo Parado and Tierra Blanca is uh, the, the two cigars for this line. The second line, it's a Cabri edition. Cabri edition, it's made in Esteli, Nicaragua with mix or blend with, with Nicaraguan tobaccos and Mexican tobaccos inside. And the name, the names and our history for every cigar, it's uh, the name of the Mexican revolutionaries horses from Pancho Villan and Emiliano Zapata, like uh, As de Oro, Lucero, and Gilguero. Okay. The revolutionary edition, it's all flavor from Mexico. Mm -hmm. The Cabri edition, it's, it's flavor uh, between Mexico and Nicaragua. Okay. A lot of minerality, a lot of, of herbs, spices, and strength. Okay. But the new line is the Soldadera Edition. The Soldadera Edition is made in Dominican Republic, in Santiago Los Caballeros, with Ostos Quesada in the factory La Isla. Okay. It's three new, three new cigars. It's called Soldadera. It's kind of, of white label. Okay. The Soldadera is the general name for the female warriors for the Mexican Revolution. No nurses, no um, a kitchen person, no companion, no wives, no sisters, no. Authentic, authentic, authentic female warriors for the Mexican Revolution. Like uh, San Petrina, for example, it's an, an spy for Emiliano Zapata's awesome army. San Petrina, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful Robusto 5x50, medium strength cigar, made in, uh, with a beautiful Connecticut wrapper from Ecuador, a very interesting binder for Dominican Republic, and it's a, it's a Criollo, and the filler is Mexico with DR tobaccos. I made this cigar for perfect pairing with a Dominican rum or maybe Caribbean rum. 
with a sweet profile of, of, of the tree, okay? Um, when, when I make these new blends, I need to share the elegance for, for DR and, mm -hmm. and result the elegance for the Mexican tobaccos inside and the flavors of the Mexican tobaccos. And it is be it's because when when for for us every cigar takes the flavor of Mexico and expose is a principal note for the nose, for the palate, is a is a principal note and, and sensations. And the second one it's a uh, Teniente Angela. Teniente Angela uh, she was an explosive expert. Oh. And yeah, and, and this is a toro. Angela Jimenez is, is the correct name for Teniente Angela. Uh, it's a Toro 6x52. And it's medium to full strength cigar made with an amazing Habano Ecuador for the wrapper. Two different binders inside the, the tobacco, the, the cigar, the Negro San Andres and the Dominican Republic to, uh, tobacco, two different binders together. And the, the filler, it's all Dominican Republic with a little bit of, of Nicaragua. Um, because the Teniente Gela is explosive expert, and this cigar, it's very explosive about the pollution. It's, it's too long, is because every third, it's very, very uh, evolutive, and it's very interesting flavors. And I made this cigar for perfect pairing with a stout beer. When I when I say perfect pairing, it's not exclusive. It's it's a suggested pairing, right? Okay, and the the my favorite for for the Soledad edition right now. Maybe tomorrow it's it's different, but right now the La Coronela, La Coronela, it's a majestuosos shaped cigar. Mm -hmm. Majestuosos, it's a fifty eight ring gauge for five and a half inch for length with a beautiful appendix uh, in the head of, of the cigar. It's not a gordo, it's uh, more short, uh, a little bit tight, but it's a beautiful, beautiful cigar because it's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of complexity, a lot of body, a lot of, of flavor inside this cigar because I take uh, in, in the blend a beautiful Habana Ecuador for the wrapper, an amazing Arapiraca Brazil for the binder. And the filler, it's all Mexico with a little bit Dominican Republic tobaccos. But this, this cigar, the La Coronela, it's a limited production because the, the Arapiraca wrapper, the, the binder from Brazil, it needs a big process to make a good, good, good tobacco. And mm -hmm. the Negro San Andres, it's a very, very hard to find this kind of, of Negro San Andres inside the, the cigar. And it's because we produce just 10,000 cigars per year for, for La Coronela. It's not a limited edition, it's a limited production, uh, just for 10,000 cigars, maybe less, uh, per year. <laughs> and I made this cigar very classic and and um, very close to the flavors and aromas and the and the profile like uh, Cuban cigars, very powerful, very elegant, and uh, and a lot of complexity and, and very evolutive. And I made this cigar for perfect pairing with a cognac. Maybe cognac XO. It's the best pairing for for this kind of of cigar because the La Coronela it's a lot of complexity. You need a lot of complexity in the in the, in the drink, in the, in the spirit, in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what is the significance be behind the name of the cigar, La Coronela? Well, uh, La Coronela, it's the first, the first woman, the first woman who take it officially for the Mexican army, the name of of the the level of coronel from women in Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah. All uh, right. Actually, uh, she was she was a, a an amazing leader for the Zapatas army, and actually on, on the on the Villas army, uh, she takes a part of of 
of, of the war in the in the south part of Mexico and the north part of Mexico, more than like uh, 70 different arms efforts in the revolution of Mexico. And and she took part in the in the gender in the gender uh, evolution in Mexico in, in the gender area and, and and the rights of of the women. It's very important for us to make to to give a homage to a good homage for this kind of women. And I I don't say these cigars is for women. No, right. If, the cigars for us no no has a, a gender no has a, a age well it has an age 21 <laughs> yes 21 <laughs> and older of course <laughs> yeah, yeah but but no have color no have a gender no have nothing it's just a cigar it's just for the uh, experience it's just for the flavor it's just for not for fun I, I, I don't need to say fun. Uh, it's more for pleasure. It's the yes. word for pleasure. Yes. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is that, you know, it's a cigar. The cigars are for everyone, but you're bringing the representation of your history, your culture and things that people, I, I doubt many outside of Mexico know about it. What, ha you know, who participated in the revolution, what the significance of their role was, who, you know, men or women. And, you know, cause I, I'm getting, I'm getting educated just by smoking the cigars and having this conversation with you, which I really appreciate because I mean, every cigar has a story for the most part. I mean, some, some people, I mean, I, I think there are some manufacturers who just make cigars because they want to make cigars, which, you know, that's fine. Um, but I love, um, a cigar or even just a brand with a good story um, and it's the uniqueness of the story whether it's you know from personal experience or cultural history um, I really appreciate and enjoy even more the cigars that have a story behind them and you know the story can be, be the story is relatable to just about just about everyone you know, or it just moves you in a certain way. And again, it can actually add to the experience. And as you said, the pleasure of the cigar, because smoking this, um, you know, the Cuchilla Parado, especially after you described it and talked about it, how the, the initial line of cigars, the first two were all Mexican tobacco. And I love that because I've never experienced that. I've never had the pleasure of getting to enjoy that. I've had Mexican tobacco in different cigars I've smoked, yes, but never had the pleasure of getting to enjoy an exclusively Mexican cigar. And that's fantastic. And I do, as and like you said, it's all about the evolution of the product and you're evolving as you go forward with the different cigars blending them with different tobaccos but at the same time you don't lose the spirit and the essence of the history and the culture and the representation of mexico while you're doing it but it's it's a beautiful partnership and and, and, and it marries very well um by how you described it and it, I'm, I'm excited very excited to try the rest of them so i'm gonna have to <laughs> i'm gonna have to um uh pace myself because like i I want to like smoke them all now, but I also want to take my time with them and really truly enjoy them. So that way I can appreciate them for what they are. So, but uh, thank you again for sending them to me. And I'm, I'm very excited to try them and highlight them. So people are, are aware and uh, can, can go buy them for themselves. Cause that's, you know, I, I I'm very much about supporting um, boutique brands. Um, that is Pretty much what I exclusively do is focus on boutique brands. No, th thank you, thank you, Kyle, for for your time and um, take your time for for smoking and try our cigars <clears throat> because we need to make more noise uh, about Mexico, about mm -hmm. uh, our heritage, and and it, it's very interesting when 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 the people come to our booth 
in, in the thresholds, like a PCA or TP, and asking me why why you why I need a Mexican cigar with all Mexican tobaccos. If you if you can make a uh, another cigar with Mexican tobacco, with Nicaragua, another kind. But for our side uh, about the Cuchillo Parado or Tierra Blanca, the, every leaf is it's different. Uh, every leaf in the floor plant is different. Mm -hmm. And every leaf between year per year is different. And right. every leaf in front, maybe, if I grow in uh, the same, the same, the same seed in this area, and in the other area, maybe a couple of meters over the over the the sea, it's different tobacco between mm -hmm. them. Okay, and I, I I need to tell you, if you grow in tobacco in the season, in the raining season, it's different of of the dry season in Veracruz. It's totally different, the flavor, the expression, and, and you need to make the different process of the curing barn, and you need to make different process in the fermentation, and, and I need to make a different process in the aging. And it is because you can you can feel a lot of differences in every cigar, in the Cuchillo Parado and the Tierra Blanca, it's different. The flavor profile and, and, the, and the sensations is different. But the Cuchillo Parado, it's Negro San Andres with, with Sumatra. And the Tierra Blanca, it's all Negro San Andres, but five different Negro San Andres inside. Wow. It's, it's, it's very interesting uh, because, for, for example, the Tierra Blanca, it's all seco and the ligero. It's growing in the dry season in the, in the, same, in the same farm for all tobaccos. But the seco and the ligero, the, the flavor and aroma leaf and the strength and flavor leaf, it's from the, the dry season. And the volado, pisos, binder, and wrapper, it's growing in the raining season. But different different process. It's changed the game for uh, at the at the end of the day for, for the cigar. It it changes the the sensations and and it's very complex to we need we need other conversation about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's very interesting. The, 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 the process, it's, it's not take the, uh, in, in the table. It's not just take different leaves and make a good blend. No, you need to find uh, where come from every leaf and what kind of process takes one, what kind of leaf to make mm -hmm. a good blend, to make a complex cigar. To make a, a good a, a good pairing with with tequila and another on another drink, but it's our passion for Mexico. It's our passion for for the cigars and it's our passion for for the pleasure for for you guys for the old aficionados. It's it's our final goal at the least for Casa nineteen ten the the total pleasure for Mexico in your mouth. <laughs> absolutely and i the just just this one has been an absolutely pleasurable experience i'm enjoying it i'm i'm very grateful because i mentioned to you prior to uh us starting to record the video that you know i had covid briefly for, uh, for the very first time i managed to dodge it for three years and it affected my palate my taste and i was very concerned because you know some people it takes a while to get that back and i was like I don't have time for that with what you know. I do and, and highlighting brands and trying cigars. I'm like, my palate needs to be in good shape. So I'm very, very grateful that our meeting and our interview took place now because I'm, I'm to the point where that I I'm getting, I have most of it back. I know that I probably need a little bit to go to get, you know, the full full, but what I have now is delicious and I'm really enjoying it. And, you know, even if there's a small limitation in my palate, I'm still tasting the complexity of the cigar, you know, the sweetness, the earthiness. And, you know, there's even a little bit of spice towards the end, slight bit of heat. I don't know if anybody else has experienced that with the Cuchillo Parado, but it is 
I'm enjoying it very much. And, you know, it's an experience I look forward to having again. So thank you for uh, sharing that passion with me. And uh, in this way, we can share the passion with other people as well. Um, I, you know, even, even how you explain everything, it comes through very clearly. The passion is, is, is there and it's, it, it comes through in your, in the conversation and in the cigars. So no, I, I definitely you. can't, you're very welcome. And I definitely can't stress enough guys, please, please focus on this brand. Give your attention to it, please. As soon as you can. And we're going to leave some information in the description below where they can go to uh, purchase Casa 1910. I know there's places here in California where they can get them. There's actually a couple of local shops near to me where you can purchase Casa 1910. So it is available. It's not, it's not something that's hard to get a hold of. Um, so definitely um, give your attention to this brand. It is fantastic. And as Manolo has expressed in this conversation, he his whole heart and soul is poured into the creation of these cigars. So definitely check them out. Thank you, Kyle, for, for your time. Uh, Very welcome. Thank you guys for, for seeing this video. Um, please enjoy the cigar no matters what uh, what country enjoy the cigar absolutely well um thank you again for uh, your time as well manolo thank you for joining me for this uh this uh newest edition of currently smoking with it's been an absolute pleasure and i hope we get to have another conversation like this again and i look forward to what the future of Casa 1910 holds and what else you guys are going to create for us to experience. So thank you again. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you uh, taking your time to check out this video. And uh, as I said, I'll leave some information in the description down below. Um, but other than that, again, thank you for joining us. And as always, catch you in the next one.